Hi everyone and welcome to another latest mix up build videos I create for your enjoyment. Today's build is another switch axe build, but this time I'm visiting a very old and extremely unique switch axe that isn't so much used by many people, but it is a weapon you want to craft for its dual stasis. And this weapon is called the Jaguar's Raider 3 switch axe. Today's set is one that will be optimised around its dual stasis, so that you can exhaust, sleep, bomb and repeat until your heart explodes from enjoyment. This set I like to call it the Sleeping Lion set. So this weapon comes in with an attack power of 665, two dual slots with one being level 2 and the other being level 3, a average good amount of sharpness for both blue and green but will need to be expanded on as it will burn through sharpness incredibly quickly, and two status effects with the first one in axe form allowing you to do sleep build up at 24 burst hit, while the more form allowing you to do exhaust damage at 21 burst hit. But as a note, you need to unlock the sleep status if you want access to it, as suddenly it is hidden. Now, for many people, it may not like much, but it is quite a great endgame switch to use against those that are highly effective against these two statuses. Such example, Devil Joe, Odegaron, Basil, Rathalos, Diablos, Raytheon, etc. Now, let's take Devil Joe for example. Devil Joe is a monster that can be easily exhausted and can be put to sleep around 2 to 3 plus times if you're lucky, with little to no effort. So this weapon against him would be perfect for allowing you to have plenty of open moments and could be speedrun worthy if you practiced enough with it. But not speedrun worthy as in you'll get great times as in you'll have clear runs, so less chances of you dying so much. Now the same thing goes for other monsters like mentioned, making this weapon and its dual states is a very unique and deadly combo that can make any player's hunt a breezy playthrough. However, its effects come a tad limited on L Dragons, with the majority of monsters not being easily affected by the exhaust buildup from what I've noticed. And although the sleep effect can be triggered on the monsters, it's not by chance I'll be able to pull it off a second time. So although this weapon is great against tier 1 and 2 monsters, it becomes a tad unreliable on, I'll say, most Elder Dragons. I'll say, if you use a Nergiante, and I've only noticed Nergiante do this every so often, you could probably exhaust them really quickly and put them to sleep easily. Now, against Kushala or Teostra or Nustra, that's a different take. But take what you will. Although, for a tip, if you keep the weapon locked, as in you don't unlock the sleep effect, and put on a non elementless jewel, you can make use of the damage increase while still being able to use the exhaust fire on the weapon, since it's considered a separate entity for the weapon. So you can have high damage, but at the same time be able to exhaust monsters much quicker. So the set. This set is designed while making for use of two stasis, so you can make your hunts more easier against most tier 1 and 2 monsters, but also give you something to mess around with if you ever get bored of playing with the pure DPS set or Immortal Vampire builds that have become quite popular quite of lately actually. So if you want to avoid all that, listen in as I come and give you the skills that will be best suited for this build. So firstly, I'm using Earplugs 5 to allow me to carry on attacking monsters through their wars. Great skill all round that allowed my set to build up and disperse monsters in a matter of seconds. Next we have Free Element 3. Now this is needed to unlock the hidden sleep effect that weapon has, as without it, we won't be able to get the secondary status effect to work on a case. But unless you just want the exhaust file, so you can make use of the damage, that's entirely up to you. Next, I'm using Witness Exploit 3 for the bonus 50% affinity upon weak points. Then I'm using Handicraft 3 to extend the weapon's sharpness by plus 30. Now, I added this because the sharpness on the weapon isn't the highest nor the best, so to extend our damage just a tad longer, I chose to go with this skill, although using a sharp jewel if you have one could also be helpful or even better alternative to use. Next, we have Sandman Fee 3. Now, this skill allows us to increase our exhaust output onto a monster by around 30%. Now, at first, the numbers may not change after some odd reason, they don't update like when you update other statuses. But it does increase the build up you can do with the skill and thus put the exhaust phase on the monster much more often, the more often they attack. Now, do remember you have to be in your sword form to make it active, from what I've noticed. You can't be in your axe form and expect it to work because that's not how it works. But anyways, next we have Bombarder 3. This skill is here to increase our normal and mega bow bomb damage output once we put the monster to sleep. This can be freely changed if you don't like using the skill and prefer to add something else in that would be more suitable for maximizing huge damage against monsters that are asleep, but sleep bombing is probably your best choice here. Next we have Evade Extended 2 for allowing me to increase my jumping space so I can close the gap quickly between me and the monster. However, 
If you have power prolonger jewel, you could add that instead as this will allow you to retain your sword mode a bit longer. Then once they're exhausted, you can switch back out and go to your normal axe mode and put the monster to sleep, but that's entirely up to you. Next, we have Power Prolonger 1, which is a knock-on effect from using the Colby Gloves. Now, like I said before, if you want to, you could add on a number two more jewels to max it out and make full use of the skill, but that's only if you have the jewels to spare. And now, lastly, we have Maximum Might 1 for the added on 10% affinity buff, but this is really not needed as I only put that there as it was a free level 3 jewel slot. So you can either go with what I want with for the extra damage buff or replace it with whatever you like or something that feels much more better. Like I mentioned before, putting on the sharp jewel here will probably be your best choice for increasing your sharpness levels. So overall, this will give you an attack rating of 735, a defense of 405 when augmented, 30% affinity plus our weakness exploit 3 when active, and 240 sleep status plus 210 exhaust fire damage that equates to 24 and 21 status build up per or generally upon some hits. If you're ever looking for a build where you can utterly demoralize a monster that are always aggressive and up in your face, then 9 times out of 10 this build will be just for you, as it can simply make the territorial of the Garon or Nightmare Fuel Devil Joe a complete and utter mess, which for you can lead to many openings for attack. And for newer players, this makes it great for allowing you to kind of be more aware of how the monster attacks and how to truly maximize your damage and your timing, because with this weapon here, yes you'll be exhausting the monster, but most times you're going to be procking the sleep effect a lot. So when the monster is asleep, you have to kind of be there and ready to what you're going to attack him with. Are you going to attack him with your weapon, or do you have some bombs with you? If you use your bombs, make sure you use the bombs that are most effective. Because you have to remember that although the monster is asleep, they don't, they don't stay asleep forever. So you have to attack them as quickly as possible, there and then, and just keep being aggressive. But that's kind of my mindset when it comes down to playing with this set, and generally for switch actors. Now, it may not pack a punch in terms of damage, but the ability to switch between two different statuses on the fly allows me to combo a monster effectively. And for me personally, I feel like that's a perfect combo as you can then make up the damage being lost via planting bombs when the monster is asleep, or go in full sword mode to exhaust the monster and carry on attacking them while they try to recover as quickly as possible. The options are all there for you between eternity damage whether you're in solo or whether you're in group. So you really don't have to worry about having to maximize the amount of damage you need to do. Although, like I said before, you can maximize damage if you want to, but it does revolve sacrificing the sleep effect. But if this is your cup of tea, then I understand, as you can freely change and adapt the build to your liking instead. But this does now conclude the end of the video, because there's not really much more I need to expand on between this build. The build is simple, it's effective, is great against tier 1s and 2 monsters, not so great against elder dragons alike, but it's really worth using if you're someone that wants to be either a team player or someone that wants to make most runs as quick and painless for you as possible. If you're going to use this on solo wise, by all means go ahead. I also recommend that you use your Palico as well, make them have like a sleep weapon or maybe a paralysis weapon to make the effective of shutting down monsters more effective. Or if you're using this in group play, then I recommend that you, I say change up your mantle, maybe bring a apothecary mantle with you to increase the status build up what you do on the monster, make it so that players, once they know the monster falls asleep, they can go ahead and sleep on the monster much more effectively, or just generally go with whatever you feel. But really, that's it. That's just that as best as the build can be. But like I said, you can always improve upon it if you don't like the current skills. But I'm trying to maximize the, both the two statuses effect as much as possible. And for me, when it comes down to playing with it, I've seen a lot of success with it. It can be improved on, but I'm pretty damn happy with the results. So like always, if you enjoyed the content, then do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload. As I would appreciate it a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.